Anyway, we've talked about adding vectors, and so as an example, um, I want to let you try this one, u plus v, if our vectors here are negative 3, 4, and v is t uh, 7, 2. So maybe pause the video and give that a shot. And then when you're ready, unpause. So you should have gotten this answer here. Negative 3 plus 7 is equal to 4. And do that. And 4 plus 2 is equal to 6. Okay, um, no big deal. It's pretty straightforward. Let's look at this one, u minus v. And actually what I want to do is I want to find the absolute value of u minus v. So if there are bars around it, what we're going to do is first calculate u plus v and then find the magnitude of that vector. So this is going to equal the magnitude of negative 3, 4, minus 7, 2. And subtraction works just as well. You have options here. What you can do is just do three, negative 3 minus 7. Or you can distribute the negative to the 7 and the 2 and then add. So it's up to you. Just be careful. Negative 3 minus 7, I'll just leave it as is. Uh, negative 3 minus 7 is negative 10. 4 minus 2 is 2. Okay, so notice we're not done because we have to find the magnitude of this vector. So what is the magnitude of negative 10, 2? Well, <clears throat> we don't have a picture in front of us. Right? So we, we could get out graph paper and draw it and then do the Pythagorean theorem. But... Um, there's a shortcut, and that is to notice that if you write it in, if you position this vector in component, uh, I'm sorry, in, in the initial position, then its tail would be here and it'd go negative 10 and then down 2. And so by doing the Pythagorean theorem, well, one side would just be negative 10, so you'd be doing negative 10 squared plus 2 squared equals c squared, but then you'd be square rooting. So this is a nice shortcut for getting the magnitude. Uh, and in any event, this is the square root of 104. So if this confused you a little bit, I, I meaning this step right here, what you should do is on graph paper, just graph negative 10, 2 in, in standard position, do the formula out, and you'll see that this is a nice sort of shortcut to getting our answers. Okay, we've talked about adding vectors, subtracting in this in this case. We're going to look at scaling vectors, too. So here's my vector u, uh, which we can write as 3, 4, because it moves u to the right 3 and up 4. All right, that's 3, and that moves you up 4. Let's say I wanted to double it. So let's say I wanted to double it. So I'll do that right here. So, so let's... Block this off so we know we're in a new example. So 2 times u. Well, intuitively, it should just be the vector that's in the same direction, but that moves me twice as far. So a vector that's in the same direction that moves me twice as far should move me, should have me start from here, move me 6 to the right and 8 up. Darn it. Let's try that again. So it moves you 6 to the right and 8 up, which is here. So this distance is now 6, and it moved me 8 up. So this big vector here in purple is 2u. And notice its components would be 6, 8. So 2u is just 2 times 3, 4. 
And so when you scale a vector to deal with the arithmetic, what you're allowed to do is just sort of distribute that to both components. And those are all the operations we'll be dealing with. Okay, so, so if we wanted to do 3u minus 2v, where our u and v I'm referring to are up here now again. That would just be 3 minus 2 times 7, 2. And we can distribute. So this becomes negative 9, 7. Plus, I'm going to distribute the whole thing. Negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. Two uh, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. And then negative 9 plus negative 14 equals negative 23. And 7 plus negative 4 is a 3. So there we are. So there's all the operations we'll be dealing with uh, when we talk about adding and scaling vectors.